Husky fans, welcome into episode number 12, a very special episode of NIU Weekly MAC Championship Game episode. NIU football. Andy Garcia alongside Sean Frazier, the Associate Vice President, Director of Athletics and Recreation here at NIU. And Sean, great to be with you. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, we haven't had a show in the last couple of weeks. So how was Thanksgiving? How was some time with the family? It was good. It was good. Thanks. Thanks for asking, uh, Andy. I hope that you and uh, your beautiful family uh, had a great Thanksgiving. We had some family time. My daughter come back from college. Uh, it was great to uh, have just us there. And then obviously between practices and, and all the uh, great things that are happening here, uh, we had some at least uh, uh, a time to say, to give thanks. You know, we have a lot to be thankful for, especially coming out of COVID, doing some of the other things. So it was just great to get around the table and to talk about all the many blessings that have happened to us uh, during this run. So good. I appreciate you asking. Yeah, it was great because Thanksgiving was around and football wasn't done. We knew we could be going to the MAC championship. We know there's a bowl game right around the corner. So yeah, got a lot of big things to be thankful for. And yeah, it was great to be around the family and uh, get back at it here this week and uh, get ready for the MAC championship game. And IU taking on Kent state this Saturday, uh, noon Eastern 11 central time at Ford field in Detroit. Before we get to that, a couple other things, Sean, I wanted to talk to you. This past weekend, uh, NIU hosted the IHSA State Championships football. Uh, I know it was uh, some great partnerships with that. Huge volunteers. I know you volunteered this past weekend. Uh, I, I heard everything went very smoothly this past, week, past weekend, but with the state championships here at Husky Stadium. Yeah, having IHSA, and let me tell you, it was a Herculean effort that went into this, right? A lot of foot traffic comes through our facilities. Great exposure for our, our, our facilities, our university. Um, this was big. This has always been big. I, I've been here since 2013, and we've started that relationship of hosting and, you know, having that much foot traffic on our campus and specifically around our athletic facilities is always a good thing, okay? Uh, Got to give a shout out to the city of DeKalb, uh, obviously our staff, uh, Husky Nation, the volunteers. I can go on and on and on. A lot of man and woman hours that went into uh, rolling out the red carpet uh, for these teams uh, and and uh, the folks that, that that came to support. So thank you so much because uh, a lot of a lot of long days, yeah. and a lot of long nights, uh, but the, people don't see the behind the scenes effort that goes down. So so shout out to everybody there. Great event, great games. You know, uh, you, you're a high school football, you're a football fan. Um, you were you got a treat because there was some real good football that was that were played over the weekend. Yeah, most definitely. A lot of fans came into town to the Cal for the state championships at Husky Stadium. Uh, now we get to the MAC championship game and, and just the excitement. I've kind of been building up, right? You get to that Thanksgiving weekend, you know, you're making plans, making hotels, getting all things set up for the game. And just a couple of days away now, Sean, as we tape this, as NIU will take on Kent State. And just your thoughts as we get closer to the MAC championship on Saturday. Let me tell you, wow. we just talked about uh, giving thanks and blessings and being thankful. Wow, this is a outstanding opportunity for us to do what we're doing right now. We are writing history, you know, worst to first, whatever these descriptions are out there. A lot of folks just counted us out. You know, this is where the underdogs are on top. Again, underdogs are on top because, again, taking a look at what Coach Hammock, this program, our student athletes, the folks around the program, yourself, the folks that have blood in the bricks here. Uh, this is uh, quite the thing in the lead up to this, uh, having our, our league Husky, Husky dog, Coach ha Hammock, having been involved, who have suited up with the Cardinal and Black, who understand the significance of winning championships. It just makes it special. It's good to be able to, to look at this program in its developmental stages and to do the things with 70 to 80 freshmen. The future is bright here. Husky Nation. It is big time. We are so excited about this game. I think some great news coming out. Thomas Hammock, MAC Coach of the Year, 10 Huskies, Mac, all MAC selections. So we're going to talk about that with Thomas Hammock. He's going to join us coming up. Again, Coach of the Year, Coach Hammock. Well deserved, John. Well deserved. Well, well deserved. This was, a, again, a huge effort, a developmental. He done, he's done so much of the overall of putting in the installation of the recruiting and the scheme and offense, defense, special teams, people who follow us know this is not a shock, uh, but you know, you got folks out there 
who doubt, you know, you know who you are, people. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's great to be able to watch somebody that you knew had those capabilities, that just needed an opportunity, and he did it. He followed up what he said to me. He told me this is his dream job, and he backed it up with action. You know how liberating, how special that is? I'm so happy for him and his staff. Yeah, congratulations. Again, we'll talk more with Thomas A. McMack, Coach of the Year, and get into the different All-Mac selections and talk about Kent State. One thing before we get to Thomas, Sean, and again, not only do we have the MAC Championship, and we hope a lot of fans are coming and making their way and getting their plans set up for Detroit, we'll find out on Sunday the bowl, st- bowl destination for NIU. And uh, John Cheney was on Inside Husky Football earlier this week with Bill Baker, talked about how TV has first choice, and we'll see what happens after that. But again, Another opportunity, and I know Huskies fans are kind of chomping at the bit to see where we may be during the holiday season. Yeah, our, our Deputy Cheney, he, he's got the thing down, right? <laughs> he's in the rooms, he's in there cutting the deals, he's in there talking about what could be all the things that I love so much. I'm so happy that he's he stepped up and he's taking leads in those particular areas. It, it just gives me great great uh, comfort to know he's doing that but you're right we've got a number of tie-ins you know we, we're in a really special situation we win uh we do certain things that are necessary and we're going to be in a very good bowl uh, against a great matchup and then we want to do we want to do some things differently in our past we want to win the bowl we want to go out on top and uh having this team and seeing what it's all about led by coach hammock uh we're gonna get it done i'm I'm really excited about those particular pieces for our student athletes, for our fans to be able to see. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Let's bring in the head football coach, Mac Coach of the Year, Thomas Hammock. We are now joined by the Mac Coach of the Year, Thomas Hammock, as his team gets ready to take on Kent State on Saturday in Detroit, taking on uh, the Mac East opponent, and we're looking forward to it. And Thomas, again, congratulations. You know, we've seen all behind-the-scenes work that we started, what, Three years ago, two years ago, when you brought in and, and Sean made you the, the new head coach and what the work has gone into what this year has been. And now you're Mac coach of the year. I know you're, you're not going to give yourself a lot of credit, but you've had a lot of credit to get to this point. Your staff has done a lot of work, but it's your vision that started all this off a couple of years ago. And congratulations, Tom. No, I appreciate that. Obviously, you know, when you win an award or like or or you recognize uh, for something like this, uh, we all know there's a lot that goes into it. And, uh, you know, we have a tremendous staff. Uh, we have a tr- tremendous group of players uh, that work extremely hard. And they've been able to uh, carry out the vision that I, I've, I've seen uh, a couple of years ago uh, to fruition. And I, I couldn't be uh, more happy uh, for them. Uh, and, and what a great opportunity we have on Saturday to, you know, it would be nice to be the um, coach of the year and, and the MAC champion. And uh, we're going to try to take full advantage of that opportunity. You finished off the regular season last week, had Thanksgiving off, some couple of days off, got back at it on Sunday. How's practice been leading up? How's the emotions been, right? You guys have now been Mac West champs, have a chance at a title. Do you have to temper emotions or has emotions been good so far? You know, we've had great energy. Um, you know, on Sunday we practiced and it was more like a, you know, a spring game, a training camp. Uh, style practice where we we really got after it uh, and really tried to, uh, you know, set our pads and make sure, you know, mentally and physically we were ready to go. Uh, And the kids were excited. Uh, They got a lot more, uh, you know, popping their legs, uh, you know, a lot more juice on the practice field. Uh, Now we just got to continue to clean up the details uh, before Saturday, because as we know, um, the last 48 to 72 hours is all about the mental preparation. And uh, the, that, that is the phase that we're entering right now. Sean? Yeah, you know, hey, wow. First off, I want to tell you, congratulations. Boy, I love you. Yeah, you know, in Hammock, we trust. Remember that press? <laughs> <laughs> remember that press when people laughed at me, just like this. But at the end of the day, what you told me many moons ago up in Wisconsin, that this was your dream job. And what you did is you backed it up. Now, Win the, win the damn MAC championships. And we're gonna do <laughs> Backed up with action. And I appreciate that. So publicly, I just want to let you know, you know, hey, thank you. Thank you on behalf of Husky Nation. I appreciate that. But shifting gears, it is an emotional shift. Great, great practices. You know, you keep that tempo, keep that thing going. People got their eyes focused, laser focused on the end game, which is being a MAC champion. Talk to me a little bit about 
what you like to see with your coaches and now with your student athletes in the system that, they, that you've created, that they've created, what, what are some of those great proud moments for you as we kind of go into this MAC championship game? Yeah, I think, you know, first and foremost, I, I want I want our players and our staff uh, to enjoy this. Um, you know, having the opportunity to play for championships, you can you can never take it for granted. Uh, you, you, you never know when the next opportunity is going to present itself. Uh, so don't make it more than what it is. Right. Just uh, do the things that have got you here, that have made you successful uh, up until this point and play as hard as you can play. Uh, if you play as hard as you can play and as physical as you can play, for 60 minutes, we can all live with the results. And as Coach Nick Saban said, you know, nobody wants to win more than the players. Mm -hmm. uh, so don't 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 get that confused or twisted. And nobody wants to win more than a head coach that played here. Uh, so, you know, we have a tremendous amount of investment we have put into this thing uh, to build it the right way. And uh, hopefully we can we can figure out a way to score one more point than Kent on on Saturday. Yeah, I, I, I like that reference about Nick. Yeah, I appreciate you didn't have to do that, but I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With success comes honors. And coach, not only when you coach of the year, but we had uh, 10 All-Mac selections. That's the most for NIU since 2017. I want to go through the list because you had Coach Amick, you as Mac Coach. You said it was the most since when? 2017. How about that? With a bunch of young guys. Uh, real young guys. Yeah. Real young guys. Uh, yes. So. Um. Let's start with Jay Ducker, freshman of the year, uh, coming in. You know, it's a crowded running back room, right? You gave everybody opportunities. Everyone has taken advantage of that opportunities. But Jay Ducker has really shined this year as a freshman of the year. No, he, he's, he's been tremendous for us uh, and allowed us to play the type of offense uh, and run game that, that we want to be able to do. And, you know, he kind of surprised us a little bit with uh, his ability, right? He was, you know, he came into the season as, as a number two. Uh, had some fluctuation there during the season, but he was ready uh, when his number was called and he took full advantage uh, of the past six to seven weeks. Yep. So I think he told me today he's a, he's 106 yards from a thousand, which as a running back, that's always a number you want to try to get to. And, and hopefully we can get that done on Saturday. First team all Mac defensive back, CJ Brown, freshman, a guy that really stepped up huge this year. And, I don't know if he's just a leadership, but he just seemed to make plays, coach, and well-deserved first team all Mac. That's a surprise, and I know CJ put a lot of work in. Yeah, you know, I think um, all offseason I talked to our team about the strength of our team is going to be our depth. And, and the, the, the past two guys that we talked about started the season as backups. Uh, Jay Duck was a backup. CJ Brown was a backup to Devin Lafayette, who got hurt uh, in the Georgia Tech game. And all CJ has done was put together a first team all conference type season week in and week out. And uh, he's done it from the first the first time he was in there, the second half of Georgia Tech uh, up into the last game of the season. And uh, we got two more games where he can he can obviously have a chance to put put an exclamation point uh, on the 2021 season. Second team on Mac, you got two old linemen, you got Nolan Potter, a sophomore and you got. Uh, Brayden Patton, who could have been first team, he got second team the senior. By receiver Trayvon Rudolph, who also got second team kickoff return. We're just starting to see what Trayvon Rudolph can do. But Brayden Patton should have all the credentials there. He's been a senior, he's been playing a lot of games as the O-line. Nolan Potter, though, a sophomore that we're going to hear a lot more of, but uh, those are the second team on Mac and really good standard. Yeah, I think, you know, we've been able to uh, flip the script offensively because of our offensive line. Um, we felt like we could have had, you know, two other guys uh, voted uh, all conference teams. But our starting five offensive linemen have played uh, together the whole year. They've been healthy the whole year. Uh, Nolan Potter has played last year. and We really felt like he's taken uh, a big jump uh, this season, and he still has two more seasons left. Uh, everybody up front on our offensive line has at least uh, two more seasons left ex except uh, Brayton. Brayton is the only – only lineman that we're losing. Uh, we feel like we got a young kid in Pete Niger that can step in next year at the center position. And we feel like we can keep that that thing going for, for years to come. And you mentioned the O-line, the third team all Mac. We got Logan Chernitz, another freshman. Running back Clint Rakovich. Glad to see Clint, uh, you know, again, third team all Mac running back. James Esther, freshman defensive lineman, linebacker Lance DeVoe. Glad to see him. You know, he's happy. He wanted to get through a season. 
where he got to play games. He did that. And he was an all max selection. Also uh, defensive back, Jordan Gandy, a sophomore. And Gandy was picked on. They went after Jordan Gandy. He lived up to it. He made plays. He had bright, uh, past breakups. I mean, so you have Shernitz, Rakovich, Esther DeVoe, and Gandy. That's your third team on Mac. And a lot of those guys could have been higher, second and first team. Coach. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm proud of all the guys that was recognized. You know, sometimes these teams, uh, you know, are formulated based on what you had going into the season. Yeah. Uh, a lot of these guys were un, unknown type uh, players. Next year, they can they can have a chance to – uh, enhance their position uh, if they continue to progress and develop uh, the right way where they can have a chance to be first team or, or second team or elevate their status uh, within the conference. Sean? Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a lot of talent here. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I know when we first spoke, as you were co coming through in this developmental uh, phase of it, uh, does any of this shock you at all? You know, I, I think people want us to believe that we are the perennial underdog, but does this shock you at all in the system that you created and you developed here? No, I mean, I, I can't say that I'm shocked. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised um, from the standpoint of, you know, a lot of these guys took their lumps last year uh, in, in, in live action, right? Uh, sometimes you get judged uh, on things when something you, you might not be physically or, or mentally ready um, but what they've done was take their uh, shortcomings or failures from a year ago and turn it around. And I think that's that's the the recipe for for greatness uh, as a person, right? How you deal with adversity, uh, how you deal with failure, uh, and your ability to overcome uh, and move forward, uh, to me, uh, gives you a chance to be successful in life. And and that's what I try to explain to these guys all the time. Yeah, it probably cannot be measured correctly just how big those six games were last year, just to get out there, Coach, with the team you had and the close games you had. Now, you had close games last year. You came into this season, had close games, and won them. Uh, let's start with Kent State and, and the rematch that happens on Saturday. I, I know you've looked at film. I know you've gone back to the game that we had with them last time. Uh, what's going to be different? What needs to be different against Kent State this weekend? I think we need to uh, play better offensively. Um, and, you know, you can look at the stats and think, uh, you know, we did a lot of good things, but at the end of the day, we had laws offensively where we didn't take advantage of the opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, our defense came out the first game and, and had three straight three and outs uh, stops, you know, stop their offense. Uh, we didn't capitalize. And so in the second quarter, um, they were able to score a bunch of points because we, we didn't, uh, capitalize on opportunity that we had. So uh, it starts there, and it starts with our ability to be able to run the football. Um, if, if we can't run the football, we can't establish uh, the line of scrimmage, it, it's going to be an uphill battle. Uh, and so, you know, we put a lot of emphasis on our offensive line to do your job, change the line of scrimmage, uh, give our backs uh, an opportunity, uh, and if they have opportunities, they can take advantage. Uh, and then everything else builds off of that. John? Yeah, I, you know, at, at the end of the day, execution is key, you know, and, and, and just looking at your practices and understanding the assignment football that you reinforce on a daily basis. I can testify by that, uh, but just watching your practices and watching your student athletes. But talk a little bit about what goes into that, because with a young team, there's, OK, we got talent, you know, OK, we, we've got speed, we've got height, we've got length. But again, the execution side of that, that generally comes with time. So tell me what you're doing. Give us a little bit of the secret sauce, not all of it, yeah. to help understand why this team has been so successful. You know, I think, uh, you know, sometimes things are, are trial and error, right? Um, you know, coming back to college in 2019, um, you, you figure there's a new age, a, a new way to deal with players, a new way to... Uh, demand from them. And so uh, I, I was more player friendly uh, in, in the approach of the off season, right? Guys get tired. Okay. You give them a day off. You know, I was more of the, the pro mentality. Uh, but what I realized is uh, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Mm. And when I was a player, you know, what was the hardest thing about playing football was conditioning, right? Running during training camp, off season, 
those things don't change. And mm -hmm. so we went back to uh, the Coach Novak School of Thought. Uh, and, and Frazier, you was out there all, all training camp. We conditioned them every day. Yep. And, and the, old, the old saying goes, um, the harder you train, the harder it is to surrender. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what you see from our team uh, is a team that won't quit. Uh, they won't give in uh, no matter the situation or the circumstances. And they've gained confidence uh, with that approach, which allows us to play uh, the type of the, in the type of games we've been able to play. You have to be a tremendous coach yep. and your attention to detail has to be on point for every play to play in nine, one possession ball games with a young football team. You know, I think that's, that's something that, you know, people don't think about in the grand scheme of things. We're, we're the second youngest team in college football. We played the most one possession ball games and been able to win seven of those nine games. Mm. The facts. The culture. It is all <laughs> about the culture. Yeah. Good stuff. You, you, you get ready again for a MAC championship game. And we talk about emotions. You're talking about going to Ford Field. Is there anything you change differently this week, Thomas, or even maybe in the pregame? I know you guys are so scheduled even when you want to go up to Detroit or when you want to practice. And, again, there's some uh, you mm -hmm. know, obligations you have to do. But can you keep this as a normal game? You know what? I, I want these guys to, to play with so much emotion and, and passion and pride that, you know, I'm going to just let them – I'm going to turn them loose. Um, you know, this is not a game where you got to give a, a, a fired up speech. You know, <laughs> I'm going to say, this is what you dream about playing in and go have fun. I wish I would have had the opportunity as a player to play in a championship game. I did not. Um, and so, you know, I'm sure guys are going to be out, you know, at in the field three hours prior to the game. You know, they normally come out 90 minutes, you know, they out there three hours. You know, they probably changing their socks. They getting a, you know, it's going to be all about the swag and looking good and everything else. But you know what? You know, back in the day, your coach used to try to bottle that in. Hey, you know what? Go have fun, man. And go play as well as you can play for 60 minutes. Yeah. Are you talking about your players or Sean T. Frazier getting out there three hours before with the swag? You know, I don't know. You know, yeah. hey, you know, I know <laughs> Frazier's going to be up early. I know that, you know. Oh, my he, goodness. He, he gave me a word the other day. Uh, that he said, he said, what, what is the phrase? Agita. <laughs> agita. It means you, you, you excited, you know, agita, you know? So I said that, you know, I, I said, oh my goodness, I, I learned something. <laughs> it's on Saturday morning. We'll have the radio coverage starting at 1030 AM central time, kickoff around 11, NIU taking on Kent State. What should we watch, Thomas? What are some of the keys though, that we have to do to get a win versus the golden flashes? Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to protect the ball. Uh, it starts there, right? They are second in the country in turnover uh, takeaways. Um, you know, we have to protect the ball. Uh, our ability to, to be able to run the football is going to be a, a good indicator of, of if we can control the line of scrimmage. Uh, we have to play great on special teams, right? And then we have to eliminate explosive touchdowns. Yes. Uh, if we can make them go, uh, nine, 10 play drives and they score. Okay. So be it, but they can't have the one, one, uh, you know, one snap touchdowns, um, you know, that, that hurts you, right. That, that hurts your, your team that hurts the energy that hurts the, you know, a lot of different things. So we have to make them go the long, hard way defensively. Um, they are going to get yards. They, they are going to score points. I mean, you know, college football these days you, is played a different way, right. Uh, so they want to, you know, stretch the field. Uh, hopefully our guys don't get confused with the with the NFL hashes and the NFL numbers. You still have to defend 53 uh, yards of space. So uh, we got to make sure we, we, we look at that in the walkthrough and make sure guys understand that the, the hash is going to be a little bit narrower, that the numbers are going to be a little bit tighter, and then make sure John Richardson understands the field goal is actually tighter as well. Yeah. So. Uh, we'll get a feel for that on Friday night. It's been so much fun, Coach. Again, we've been able to cover you now. This is your third season. But it's fun to see the, just the escalation. And uh, looking forward to it. I've been excited. And I can't wait to get to Detroit. It's NIU and Kent State, 11 a.m. Central Time, Ford Field, for a chance at the MAC Football Championship. Looking forward to it, Thomas. Good luck, and I'll see you in Detroit. No, that, 
appreciate you. Appreciate you, Frage. Uh, I know, uh, Andy, we've got there a little bit quicker than you anticipated. Uh, <laughs> but let's, let, let's take full advantage of the opportunity. Go Huskies. Listen, hey, prove me wrong all day, Thomas. You know that. <laughs> Congrats. Have a good one. That was the MAC Coach of the Year, Thomas Hammock, and he is right. Did I think that NIU would be here playing in this championship game? Probably not. And Thomas knew, and I've talked a lot about it with him, like, hey, this is an up-and-coming program. We're going to be doing this and this. And he looked at me like, this is going to happen this year. It can happen this year. And, yes, I is one that has been proved wrong, and he can prove me wrong all he wants, Tom or Sean, because Thomas has done such a great job of just building it and building it. And, again, right, when you're a winning team, some breaks go your way, right? They've had to fight through injuries, but they've also gotten some breaks, but they've also made their own breaks, and that's why they're in the MAC championship. Yeah, no, uh, and, and listen, hey, we know you're a Husky, baby. You know, you, you, you've proved it time and time, and you've done a great job, and you, you keep us honest, and that's what we need to have. But, you know, what it is in this, and this has been great because I've been here nine years. So I've, I've been under uh, some serious uh, 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 winning, you know, uh, with the former staff and now with Coach Hammock. You know, that's the common denominator is really this culture of responsibility, uh, uh, of responsibility, a yeah. culture of responsibility. And I see it day in and day out with Coach Hammock, his staff, uh, and his kids. So this culture of responsibility, uh, basically the outcomes of that is winning. The byproduct of great grades. So he's captured that secret sauce. And, you know, hey, uh, these kids love Coach Hammock and his staff. And, and, and that just permeates a lot of other things that are currently happening and putting them in this situation to win a championship. So kudos to him. Kudos to our supporters and those folks that that saw this. And I, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm extremely happy for them because this is what we talked about, about the vision of what this program could be. And then also, too, understanding what the future is going to look like right now. So I'm excited about this. Yeah. Eighth time in 12 years, and I used playing for the MAC championship and it happened in Detroit on Saturday. Before we wrap things up, I do want to mention basketball. We now turn the calendar. We're in December. Basketball flex packages on sale now. Great deals. Basically, tickets for $6 each. You can pick the number of vouchers you want. Pick the games you want, either men's or women's games. Combination, redeem your vouchers for tickets. Purchase them now. Use them all season long. Available at NIUHuskies.com or by calling 815-753-PAC, 815-753-7. Two two five, And again, we want to thank everyone for watching all year. We've got a couple more episodes of NIU week before we move on even into basketball, but uh, it's been fun. NIU athletics again, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Again, we've got a couple more NIU weeklies coming up. I'm sure we'll do one for the bowl game. And other than that, but um, other schedules coming up, women's basketball is at the compass challenge this weekend. That is being held in Macomb, Western Illinois. So they uh, women's team will take on Western Illinois and then they'll take on either Southern or Eastern. We just don't know yet. Hopefully NIU women's basketball can get a couple more wins on a nice winning streak right now. And again, Saturday, we've got wrestling at the Cougar Clash in Edwardsville, Illinois. We've got men's basketball on Saturday at Dayton. We've talked about women's basketball playing as well on Saturday, but really football. NIU Kent State will be on the radio 1030 a.m. Central Time, kick around 11. Bill Baker, Mark Lindo, myself will be uh, very excited to present to you the NIU uh, Kent State game, MAC championship game. Uh, looking forward to it, Sean. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you and, and being down there on the sidelines. Like we've been all year and been going through these moments and been going through these wins to get to this point and have an opportunity to play for a title. It's what every team wants to do. There's only, what, seven games this weekend, championship games. And I use in one of them and they have a chance to win the match. Yeah, no, this is exactly what the expectations are. And uh, you know, Coach Hammock and the staff and our young men have, uh, have taken that challenge and uh, are doing the things that the reason why they're here. So I'm excited about that, um, humbled to be a part of the journey and uh, definitely really joyous to be a part of NIU and NIU Athletics. So this is just good stuff and uh, it's gonna get better. Uh, the, the best is yet to come. I always say that, uh, I can back it up now. And uh, I'm really excited about this, but you know what? We need another MAC championship. And uh, I know the boys are hungry for it. So good stuff. Looking forward to it. I want to thank Thomas Hammock, Matt, Coach of the Year, for joining us, and Sean, always for your time, and uh, looking forward to it. Can't wait to be with you in Detroit. You got it, Andy. God bless you. Go Huskies. For Sean T. Frazier, I'm Andy Garcia saying thank you for watching NIU Weekly. We hopefully see a lot of you in Detroit. Go Huskies.